another more conventional historian's narrative around some of this is that that yes, all these things happened, obviously, that you're talking about, but that the really powerful origins of the current day religious right and the, the intensity of Christian America in today's national discourse, that that's really more something that happens uh, in response to the, to the cultural turmoil of the 60s and the mm -hmm. 70s, or, or perhaps alternatively or with it, it's a response to the civil rights movement mm -hmm. and, uh, or the uh, abortion ruling in the early 1970s, and that, and, and that really what we think of now in terms of, of, uh, of religious political activism mm -hmm. is more rooted in that period of time and a response to those, those big changes in American life. Uh, I would agree with that completely. Again, this project started out as an exploration of the religious right forming at the grassroots in the 60s and 70s. Uh, but again, what led me to this was the realization that these phrases have power. So what, the story here is not that corporate America created the modern religious right, but rather that they set up um, a series of religious and, and patriotic uh, symbols, mottos, ceremonies that later become a touchstone for the religious right. So again, if you look at, as I did in the, in the school prayer thing, and as I also did on, on Roe v. Wade, uh, the letters being written in that are angry, uh, they constantly invoke these phrases. Uh, they do today. Uh, you, you'll see this in the presidential campaign, invocations of one nation under God and God we trust to advance a kind of social conservative uh, vision of the religious right. Uh, uh, so this is really a story of unintended consequences. This movement for economic and political conservatism spawns uh, this kind of social religious conservatism. And I was interested in this uh, to see the way in which these, these different faiths come together. Uh, that was an education for me too. Uh, as a Catholic, for me it was interesting to see the way in which Catholics glom onto what is a, originally a Protestant movement uh, and very much one that's, that has Protestant edges in that, that early Christian libertarian uh, phase. Once Eisenhower kind of opens the gates and welcomes everyone in, the Catholics rush in to take advantage of this. The, the, the sponsor of, uh, of the, 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 the pledge change uh, is a Catholic congressman. He gets a note from the Knights of Columbus who are very proud about their role in proposing this. Uh, they start doing that in 52. Um, and so Catholics, I think, see this as a way, to, again, to prove their Americanism. So, so it's not just that, again, this question of, of were people suckers. I think people at the grassroots saw this as an opportunity to prove their Americanism, that we are one nation under God, and that means Catholics too, that means Protestants too, that means Jews too. There, there are references to Buddhists, uh, to, to Muslims, to Hindus as well in this, in this era, uh, as small as their, their, their portions were. Uh, but there's a real sense here of the, of the face coming together, and so there are ready uh, 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 participants of this ac across the board. From the University of Virginia's Miller Center, this is American Forum.